Hello, it's Lord Slaw here, coming back to you with another video, and the topic of today's is the top 5 writers for Doctor Who. So, writers are a pretty important part of Doctor Who, as you could have guessed, because, well, they write the episode, and there's a variety of writers which, you know, sometimes write different quality, depending on what season they're doing, maybe they've been taught to do something, whatever, but we all have our favourites, because some people just consistently write great scripts, they write in a style that you love, and, you know, you just want them back all the time. So that's why I'm here to count down the top five of them. There's a couple of rules. Uh, they have to have written at least two stories for the TV series. So, like, unfortunately not including Big Finish writers. The reason why I don't do Big Finish in my videos is because I have listened to a bit. Like, what, well, quite a bit. You know, like, well over 60 stories, say. But I don't feel like I can make a proper judgment on Big Finish at the moment with how much I've seen. So maybe when I've listened to a lot of Big Finish, I might be able to start including it in my videos or at the very least do Big Finish top fives just to, you know, so that you can get an idea of what I think of Big Finish because I want to talk about it, but I just feel it's not fair to judge quite yet. But let's get on to the video. So at number 5 we have Kit Pedler and Jerry Davis. I mean, how could they not be on the list? They wrote three stories together, and Jerry Davis also wrote two stories without Kit Pedler, and they're really good. I mean, The Tenth Planet is just fantastic. It introduced the Cybermen, they're very creepy, they're very well done, and I think it was Kit Pedler's kind of did all the sciencey ideas with the Cybermen and Jerry Davis kind of filled in the story. It works well, it's a really solid episode. Then you got the Highlanders, which Jerry Davis um, wrote with someone else. I think it's Elwyn Jones, but I might be wrong. But that was really good, I love that story. Also the Moon Base, one of my all-time favourites by Kit Peddler and Jerry Davis this time. Absolutely brilliant, love that to pieces. Uh, and the Cybermen are portrayed best in that. Even though their costume isn't as good as in the Tenth Planet, the way they're written is best in the moon base and then of course you got my favorite sideman story and my fourth favorite story of all time tomb of the sideman by kit peddler and jerry davis it's fantastic and it's a testament to how you know like good they are as writers i mean sure the story isn't like objectively it isn't that good but it's just got a magical feel which captivates any doctor who fan and then also got revenge of the sidemen which is written by jerry davis which i'm not a big fan of but i'll let it slide because the rest of their episodes are really really good so at number four, we have Terry Nation. So being a thief aside, Terry Nation's written some very good scripts for Doctor Who. Let, let's talk about them. The Daleks, one of my all-time favourites, absolutely brilliant. Uh, I love it to pieces. Very, very good story. Keys of Marinus, it, objectively, it's a bit crap, but he did write it in four weeks, and it is a lot of fun to watch, at least in my opinion. So, yeah, I really like that story. Dollar Vision of Earth, very overrated for some reason, because I'm not a huge fan. I mean, it's all right, but... It's pretty dull at times and has a very poor direction. Uh, the Chase, that one's a lot of fun as well, even though objectively it's not very good. Dalek's Master Plan, episodes 1 to 5 and 7. Episodes 1 to 5 of Dalek's Master Plan are some of the best Doctor Who you will ever watch. They are so good, tense and gripping. It's a shame the rest of the story lets it down, but still, got to be said that those episodes are fantastic. Um, also, you got Planet of the Daleks, a homage to the 60s Dalek story is what I like to think it as. Uh, as of, or bleh, whatever, um, but some people would say that's just Terry Nation being lazy, whatever it is, it's enjoyable enough, not the greatest thing ever though, Death to the Daleks, pretty enjoyable, um, not too great on the objective side again, but it's a lot of fun, so I'll let it slide, Genesis of the Daleks, I absolutely love this story, one of my all-time favourites, and well, yeah, everybody says that, so I don't really need to go into it much, Destiny of Daleks, it's shit, uh, and it's a shame, because that's the only story I really don't like this. Oh, and there's the Android Invasion as well. Uh, that's a pretty good story. Uh, you know, like, not anything spectacular, but it's still, still a good story. So, yeah, Terry Nation got lots of good stories. Got a pretty good portfolio going. Only Destiny of the Daleks that I really don't like. So, yeah, that's why it comes in at number four. So, at number three, we have Dennis Spooner. Ooh, I love this man. He is a brilliant writer. He's wrote like so many really good really fun doctor who stories let's start off shall we uh, the reign of terror a fantastic pure historical really good really enjoyable he even has some funny moments which is kind of dennis spooner's trademark he's a very funny man brilliant one of my favorite pure historicals uh the romans a very very funny pure historical a lot of humor in this and it, it, it works especially after a lot of more serious pure historicals i think we deserved a, a quite a light-hearted one and it's a really fun romp, very good. The Time Meddler, keeping on with a really funny trend. Time Meddler is 
so good. I absolutely love it. And Dennis Spoon is best script for sure. Um, also got the last six episodes of Dark's Master Plan. Well, whatever, episode six and episode eight to the twelve. They're a bit of a letdown compared to the first uh, five parts, but they they're still all right. Like uh, and episodes ten to twelve become really good again. So he does make up for it. He's also um not credited for this, but he helped write Power of the Daleks with uh David Whitaker, which obviously if you had anything to do with Power of the Daleks, you're instantly god to me. But yeah, so plenty of great stories behind him. Very funny and just writes really well, and that's why he comes in at number three. So at number two, we have Don Horton. Yeah, he only wrote two scripts, but they were two absolutely brilliant scripts. I just have to mention them and put them this high up. I mean, one you've got Inferno, his first script for Doctor Who, and it's my favourite story of all time, no question about it. It's so, so brilliant. Um, I'll need to do a review on it at some point because that's another story where I just need to get it out on this channel because I haven't had a chance to properly get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. Uh, thus far. He also got The Mind of Evil, which is his second and last story on the show, and it, that is also a brilliant story. Maybe not Inferno levels, but it's still really, really, really good. Like, I think it's in my top 30 as well. It's so good. It's such a, a bit of an underrated one as well. I highly recommend you go and check out The Mind of Evil if you haven't already, because it's a very, 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 a very good story, and I really enjoy it, and well, that's why Don Horton comes in at number two. So now on honourable mentions before we get to number one. So there's a lot of writers I'm going to talk about. For, so for time's sake, if they wrote a lot of episodes or I'm not like, you know, the biggest fan of them, I'm just going to kind of mention them and not really talk about them too much. Uh, so John Lucarotti, he wrote three stories for Doctor Who, The Aztecs, which is really, really, really good story. Uh, deals with some of the issues of time travel very well and is an excellent episode for Barbara. Marco Polo, a brilliant character building episode, it definitely needed in season one, and it's just a masterpiece, I absolutely love it, it's it's beautiful, um, and it's got some really good sets as well going for it, I, I wish we had it found, and also The Massacre, which I kind of need to rewatch because last, when I last watched it, I thought it was good, and I really wanted to like it more than I did, I just found it a bit on the dull side, and that was a problem, but oh well, John Lucarotti's a brilliant writer, he does characters, you know, almost pitch perfectly, and... Yeah, it's, it's, I really wish I'd had more scripts from it, to be perfectly honest. You also got Malcolm Hulk, who wrote a lot of stories for Doctor Who, some very good ones. Uh, I'm not sure what my favourite... Well, well, actually, I do know what my favourite would be. It would be the War Games, obviously. Same with Terrence Dicks, my favourite would be the War Games, because he co-wrote with Malcolm Hulk, and there's loads of really good Terrence Dicks stories as well. But, you know, just kind of mentioning them, because there's too many to go through. Uh, you also got Mervyn Hayes and Henry Lincoln. They're very good writers. Brian Hales, very good one. Um, Robert Holmes is... Oh, phenomenal writer, one of Doctor Who's best, uh, he definitely under understood the show the most out of everybody, Robert Banks Stewart, a brilliant writer, David Fisher, I I really like his writing, he's got loads of good, well, if, half his episodes are really good at least, uh, Andrew Tatar and Stones of Blood, I love to bits, uh, The Creature from the Pit's okay, um, not that great, but it's still enjoyable enough, I hate The Leisure Hive though, and that's why he couldn't come on the list, I absolutely despise The Leisure Hive, and then you got Eric Sayward who wrote quite a few really good episodes throughout the 80s, and that's it for all the mentions, so let's get on to number one. So, at number one, we have the man himself, David Whittaker. He's such, such a good writer. He knows how to play audiences right into his hand. He's very skilled and has wrote some very good episodes which do characters and story pitch perfect almost. Very, very good. Edge of Destruction is his first one. It's not the greatest thing ever, sure, but it's still a lot of uh, fun and also gels the characters together pretty well, which is what was needed after the Daleks, especially as they'd had quite a few fallouts uh, at that point. And then you've got The Rescue. Again, not like, you know, one of the all-time greats, but it's a two-parter. It's Philly, and it's pretty fun, and it works, and it does well to introduce Vicky. Then you've got his first, like, real quarter of a script. That's The Crusade. I don't know how pe more people don't appreciate this because The Crusade is fantastic one of barbara's greatest episodes probably the only one which is better is the aztecs maybe but I, I love the crusade and then you've got power of the daleks it's the perfect way to introduce like patrick trout into the role it's it just works so well and it's got it's so clever again as i said in my last video i need to do a review of power of the daleks just to get it out uh, it's so it's my third favorite episode i love it um evil of the daleks it's so so good not as good as power of the daleks but it's still brilliant i absolutely love that story 
to um really really good uh, the wheel in space you know not the huge all-time great but it's still a very good episode in my opinion i know a lot of people don't like it but hey my opinion um enemy of the world oh, is enemy of the world so good another one of my all-time favorites like it just scrapes not being my top 10 and it's such a shame because it's absolutely brilliant ambassadors of death was his final script for the show which was co-wrote with quite a few people but you know he's still the main person who's credited at it as it um as writing it and that's a very fun very good story as well which i really like and that concludes my list with david waker at number one as he is a brilliant writer and i highly recommend you check out all his stories so thanks for watching and i'll see you back next time in another video